Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us for day three of the Midwest Oracle User Group and the Chicago Oracle User Group Joint Virtual Conference, sponsored by Viscosity North America. And today we have Rich Nemec presenting for us. He's also the Midwest Oracle User Group President. Um, my name is Monica Lee and I'm the Marketing Director at Viscosity North America, but I'm also the Conference Chair for this annual conference. So if you've ever frequented this conference in the past, um, you may recognize me and I do hope we see you next year in person in Chicago. Um, for those of you not in Chicago joining us, thank you so much for finding us, welcome. Um, we're super excited to have you. A couple key uh, house rules I'm gonna give you. I know we're all used to virtual webinars these days, but um, so you know, in GoToWebinar, there is a section where you can submit questions. This is a live webinar, so please feel free to take this time with Rich, ask him whatever questions you want, and he'll get to them as he can, or he'll get to them at the close of the um, presentation. So go ahead and put those in as you think about them. If you've got any other questions that aren't technical about his session, um, I or my colleague Katie will get to them as well during this presentation. Katie will also be following up with all of you guys afterwards with um, a slide deck and a recording of today's webinar. So definitely um, look for an email from Katie Barnes. So I think with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Rich so he can introduce you a little more um, to the conference and then we'll hear from Viscosity for a bit. Thank you. So first of all, on behalf of myself and Alfredo Abate, welcome you. I did want to let you know that tomorrow, Virgin Kaplanoglu will be speaking on how Oracle's Innovation Center, which is in Chicago, one of just two in the world, uh, was built with uh, robots from Boston Dynamics, uh, integrated with Oracle, RFID tags, wearables, 3D sensors, talks about how the connected home is being connected to utility companies and how Oracle can help manage that. On Friday, we have Marcus Arancibia, and he is going to talk about, you've got a model in machine learning, now what's next? And the next step of that with advanced, more advanced machine learning. And with that, I'm going to pass it to Katie. Thank you so much for sponsoring us today and running our virtual conference at Viscosity. Thanks, Rich. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, my name is Katie Barnes, Account Manager at Viscosity. We are very excited to be sponsoring this conference um, and are looking forward to the rest of the presentations this week. And before we get things started today, I'm going to introduce you guys to Viscosity and go over some of our different areas of expertise. Viscosity is an Oracle partner. We work very closely with Oracle product management, and we have four Oracle ACEs among our leadership. At our core, we help businesses adapt and thrive with the changing needs, demands, and technologies that businesses face. Many Oracle customers are increasingly relying on professional service partners like ourselves to serve as trusted advisors and help make better purchasing decisions in an area that is constantly evolving. Our business model at Viscosity is designed to implement technologies and solutions that will ensure your challenges and goals are met with. And we do this by building close relationships with individuals like yourself, being an open and honest resource and showcasing our areas of expertise through our webinars and workshops. So our areas of expertise really fall under three pillars, data, apps, and infrastructure. A large bulk of our business is on the database side, including data integration, data warehousing, zero downtime migration to latest versions, including 19C. And overall, we help improve performance at the database level. In our applications practice, we do a lot of Apex development, EPM, ERP, we develop custom apps. And lastly, our infrastructure and hardware practice includes Oracle's public cloud offering, bare metal engineered systems. And um, we were actually named Oracle's ODA partner um, back in 2019. So as you can see here, we're very active and recognized within the Oracle community. We do pretty much everything when it comes to Oracle, but these are some of our more broadened areas of expertise. As I mentioned earlier, we have a very close relationship with Oracle. The people that you see here on this slide represent some of Viscosity's leaders and our Oracle ACEs. These guys are awesome. They present at Open World and Oracle user group conferences all over the globe each year. Um, and they're very eager to meet with you and your team and help uncover how we can best support you. Trust me when I say there's nothing better than having four ACEs in your hand. 
So this slide showcases some of our other services and I'll just briefly highlight a few of them. In our team at Viscosity, we have experts on Oracle license management that have actually come from Oracle and worked in that space for several years. We provide all of our customers with the best knowledge and the best practices on how to manage and maximize your Oracle investment. We are probably most known for our zero downtime migrations and upgrade services. We've helped customers migrate from AIX to Linux with zero downtime, and more recently have been helping our customers with upgrading to Oracle 19C. Um, with our performance health checks, we can fix pain points before they become real problems for our customers. Definitely another popular service that we offer. And lastly, we have a full stack of DBA services as well. If you have any questions about our services, please reach out to one of us. We are always happy to answer any questions that you might have. I wanted to showcase the work that Viscosity has put into becoming trusted advisors who have actually written the books on Oracle's latest technologies and versions. Anything from virtualization, pluggable databases to Oracle Exadata. If any of the books that you see on this slide interest you, or if you're interested in connecting with one of us, like I said, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to share our resources with you and your team. Alrighty, last slide before I introduce today's speakers. Um, if you haven't already checked out our events, our events page, please do so using the URL that you see here, viscosityna.com slash event. We update this page on a monthly basis with our webinars, workshops, and our other events that we have going on. Um, it is a really great resource. I will be sending out a copy of the slides and a recording of today's presentation to everyone, hopefully later this afternoon. So just be on the lookout for an email from me. Um, sometimes they can go into your junk or spam folder, so just be aware of that. Um, and in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, feel free to submit questions in the chat box or email me directly. Um, my email address is at the bottom of this slide here. So now let's go ahead and introduce today's speaker. Today we have the amazing and wonderful Rich Nemec, Chief Innovation Officer of Viscosity, Oracle Ace, co-founder and CEO of Tusk, and world-renowned IT expert with over 30 years of industry experience. Um, his experience in data processing ranges from teaching to consulting with emphasis in data administration, performance tuning, project management, and technical education. You guys are definitely in great hands for today's presentation. So without further ado, I will go ahead and hand it over to him. All right, thanks so much, Katie. I appreciate being here. Uh, I feel like machine learning is a very deep topic, so I decided to write a machine learning 101 session just to give you exposure to many areas of it. You'll have to take this home, download it, get a copy from Katie. I'll give you the email to get that in the future to really become good at it. But, it, but as you watch this, Think about your company and where things can apply to your company. Which algorithms apply? Which business situation apply? And I always say, welcome to the fifth dimension, because everything they talked about Twilight Zone is happening right now as we speak. And you can create that. You have been given a chance. You want to make a positive difference in the world? You can do it with machine learning. Uh, there's a little bit about me and... Katie talked a lot about, it's nice to have four aces when you're upgrading at 19C, that's all I can say. And here is a get a copy of the free notes, hello at viscosity.com, I know that'll get to Katie, but there's her email just in case. And a lot of stuff like this I put on Twitter on a regular basis. But what are we gonna look at? There's a lot of disruption happening right now. How about machine learning and Oracle? little bit on that but the key of this is what are the applications of those algorithms where can you use them think about it as I go through it and again just I'm gonna go through it at the surface and then some of the places the data is flooding us big data IOT Oracle has also put machine learning in Oracle apps let's take a quick look at that and then I'll look at robotics things like RPA in the future as we go through but we're moving from this place where we are using digital it used to be a mainframe to wearing digital, to implanting digital in the hive mind, which is the internet at this point in time. And when I look at the future of implant technology, it's already here. I mean, this guy's arm is his job. You thought Edward Scissor's hands would never happen? Uh, it's here. It's are at work now. They're in, taking away certain jobs, but they're creating new jobs as we speak. When I look at innovation, a lot of companies are very innovative, but few of them effectively leverage machine learning. 
Uh, according to Gartner, it's less than 5% right now. Uh, they use big data, but they don't leverage it to its fullest using things like robotics and AI and machine learning. But this disruption is happening. We've gone from postal to email, telegraph to a telephone, then a cell phone, floppy drive to a USB, encyclopedia to Wikipedia, filing cabinet to a database managed by a DBA. And we're going faster. Email is just, I'm going to text you. I'm going to send you a picture, Snapchat and Instagram. USB, maybe Google Docs or somewhere in the cloud. Wikipedia, going to a robot, Alexa and Siri. You don't think it's a robot? It is. DBA, moving to autonomous. DBA is managing too many databases. Autonomous database helps me to manage some of those. But innovation is more than just the cloud or technology. It's how do I apply that? You know, this is maybe a telephone and then a cell phone emerges at some point in time. So let's look at some of the innovators. Apple is specifically a tech innovator. If you look at the things they've done, it's tech over time. Whereas Amazon is really a retail innovator, had their own Black Friday, had their own Prime Day, Innovation Day. Google is really a marketing innovator. And through that marketing that they sell you a lot of information, they're also see what well, we can leverage that data and they use a product called TensorFlow that has image recognition. So I look at a thousand pictures of cats and people and cars, and I say, uh, with an autonomous car, I can say, don't hit those cats, people, or cars. That through TensorFlow, you did image recognition. You know what they are now. Oracle also integrates with TensorFlow. So hopefully the people that build those cars do a very good job. We don't have any issues. <laughs> Oracle, though, has a different focus. Their focus is you. Their focus is, I'm giving you the tools so that you're an incredible carpenter. Look at Larry Ellison. I admire risk takers, leaders, people who do things before they're fashionable. He's saying, I like innovators. So what did they do? They gave you a cloud. Be a little late, but it's starting to grow very fast now. They also bought a company called Data Science because they believe every organization is exploring it to proactively give them competitive advantage. So Oracle sees this coming. So they have that pr product uh, company they bought on Data Science, but they also have autonomous database, not very expensive, by the way, and machine learning's built into it, and it's free. Apex built into it, and it's free. But they also put it in the apps for you. You want to do manufacturing, they've got machine learning it. And they've also added it to OAC. So four different ways to go after it. A robot may not look like one. Oh, they don't complain. They work 24-7. Autonomous database. It's a robot working for you, alongside you. That's what's important is makes you more valuable if you could get three times the work done automatically manages the database, secures it, tunes it, recovers it, puts the patch on before you even know you need a patch. Leverage that. Have this helper at your side for the databases that maybe are smaller. You could put on an autonomous database where it fits. How about the, the, the autonomous database and the DBA and machine learning in general? It's going to change your job. I hope so. You're going to get closer to the business. Data is going to be critical. Data admin is going to be critical. Uh, the developer, you, you'll see here, there's a lot of SQL involved. And who's watching over all those cloud costs as well? So your job's not going away, but it is shifting as it has in the past. Autonomous data warehouse, if you wanted to provision one, let's see how long it takes. Oh, three minutes, you have it up, 18C. Oh, three minutes, you have it up, 19C. Oh, you were on 18C? They'll automatically upgrade you to 19C. Use automatic indexing to make sure it's as fast as it was. 70% growth rate Q4 last year. Autonomous transaction processing provision, two and a half minutes it took me. Autonomous JSON database for documents. You know, some people say, I want to use Mongo. Mongo and AWS have been fighting over benchmarks. Who's faster? And then Oracle used the same benchmark and said, oh, by the way, we're twice as fast. And you know what? We'll do it for half the price. So you want to have JSON database. 
I can also very quickly scale it up or down. I don't have to move it to a larger serger, server like I have to do in some clouds. I could just scale it. I could just stop it by clicking stop here. There it goes, stopping, stopped. Went from green to yellow to red. I mean, yellow to yellow. I also go to the service tool and do things like Apex. I'll develop SQL developer. But I can't do anything with this. So I got to go make OML users, log in as admin. I'll create another user and log into that user. Now I can see everything. First thing it gives me is some documentation. And the documentation is not only a DBA manual, it's small, quick, short. And underneath, I could run SQL statements, I could run SQL scripts. Or I have a string of SQL scripts and SQL statements inside of notebooks. I could also have R, I could have Python. I can do jobs, I can have examples. But let's get started and we have these quick start tutorials. Take all of a few minutes to learn different things. If I go into SQL, select start from tab, can do that since version five. Creating a table, you can see it's tabular. Now I'm gonna click on the pie chart and it'll turn into a pie chart. Settings, I could change the groupings and things like that as well. Now the heart of what we're looking at is how do we get to be that data scientist? And do we even want to be that? I feel like it's multiple people, but the first step is, do I understand the business and what we need? Do I understand the data, how to visualize it? What about missing data? Can I bin it in certain ways, normalize the data? What about unstructured data? All these different data types. How about modeling, build a model, evaluate and deploy it? You're gonna find out this data part, it's the biggest part of this. So first of all, the business understanding not predict the best customers, but by how much money they spend, how often they spend it, specific dollar amounts, you know, what is it? Maybe I wanna just classify good and bad customers. I don't want the best customers, I wanna classify this so I can go to big data and find out if any of that has my good customers in it. I don't want predict employees that leave, but based on people that voluntarily left, tell me who might leave or cluster things into age groups. So Oracle starts with this, and most of this is just kind of give you a feel for it, only an overview, supervise functions. So first of all, I have a function I want to do. I want to know what attributes make that great customer, or classify into good or regression, show me my future numbers. Supervised learning says take the data I have now and then leverage it with new data. And here's some of the algorithms. I'm gonna go through the functions and algorithms one at a time. You don't have to learn them here. And there's unsupervised functions. I don't have any data. I'm going to some data I don't know anything about, clustered into age groups maybe. Find anomalies. Association rules, feature extraction, and there's some algorithms that go with it. Well, let me make it easier now. This is kind of my way of looking at it is first, what's the problem? Find out what the problem you want. You want to make more money? No, that's not good enough. You've got to, you got to say very specifically, I want the business to find more customers like this customer. What's the function? Oh, the function is I need to classify into good and bad customers my current data. Then I need to build a model using an algorithm, a classification algorithm of which there are seven to try this out and I have to know which one I want to use. Then I'm going to train that model with 60% of my data because I know which are good and bad customers, see which model is the best when I score it against the other 40%. So the other 40%, I say, how well did it do? And I already know which ones are good or bad. And then I'm going to compare seven different algorithms I can use for classification. I can also do regression attributes, Things that have to do with what people buy together, association, clustering, anomaly detection, time series, when they buy stuff. And then this, again, just the basics on it, just so you have this if you download these slides. But this is the create a model, the different things you need. I'm going to show you an example in a second. Then I detail what all these pieces are. But the key parts of the model is this. I have a settings table. Which model I'm using. 
And then down here, when I create the model, I have a model name. I have the function, which we just talked about, classification. What table am I going to operate this against? Which column? And what am I trying to find out? So based on the customer ID, are they going to buy this NFL logo or my alma mater on my credit card? And then the settings points back to the actual algorithm. And here's one that does anomaly detection, also does classification, but based on the customer, it's looking for no, means just find anomalies. I'm not trying to find if they're going to buy a credit card. I just want to find if they fall outside. Are they an outlier? And then some ways to look that information up. Here's a quick example. How would I use this? Here I'm creating a, a settings table with support vector machines as the algorithm I'm using, I'm doing attribute importance. Give me the customers that are buying insurance. What attributes mattered? Now I go into this and it says, well, bank funds mattered the most, but all of these other things also mattered. So very quickly, I find out which attributes matter very quickly. Then I can do classification. Again, I'm using support vector machine. But now the function is classification, and I'm classifying them into customers that are going to buy insurance. And then I'm going to go there, and I'm going to do a select using that model name. And I'm going to say, given if I give you all of these things that I know are important attributes, will they buy insurance? 93%. If I'm a salespeople, tells me, is it worth calling them? Obviously, I build some Apex app for that salesperson or to make it easier. These are the algorithms Oracle support. It's enough to keep you busy for about five years. That's all I can tell you. There's all kinds of settings, but the real names of them that you have to set are here. It took me a while to find all these. Keep in mind there are additional settings within each of these. You know, how many, for example, cluster, how many groups do you want? That's a setting. And then there are some examples Oracle has with a function. I'm like, I don't even know what algorithm they use. Where is it? And there's a default algorithm as well for these different functions. So keep that in mind, just FYI. So this is just an overview on some of the basics in Oracle itself. Now let's look at what goes behind an algorithm. So let's look at an anomaly detection algorithm. So, so what do they do? 40 years ago or so, somebody started building math that said everything inside the circle is okay and everything outside is an outlier. And they built, refined this math over decades of time so that you can use it. You can also use a support vector machine to separate good and bad customers, a linear support vector machine. Not separating them by the green or the blue, but the red line. So they're as far apart as possible. So let's go to the service council and let's go into machine learning. And maybe before you build a notebook, look at some of the examples. They'll show you an anomaly detection or association, attribute import. And they do this for both SQL and Python. Then I go in, when I build a script, it's percent script. Otherwise, it's percent SQL when it's SQL, percent Python when it's Python. And here I'm going in and I'm saying create a model, giving it a name as I did in the earlier example, and you're not gonna learn this right now. I'm just giving you exposure to this stuff. What function am I doing? Classification. What table am I going? Customer 360 by customer ID, and then I say no, which means I wanna find anomalies. And then my settings table tells me the algorithm, support vector machines. And then the rest of it is SQL. Oh, I'm gonna look at all these different, different columns, and I want to do it and predict using this model I just built to see if they're anomalous. And maybe by years of residence, maybe by marital status. Ah, let's do one step better. How about give me the top 15 anomalous people by cust ID? Oh, even one step better. Give me the attributes that are making them anomalous. I can go and find those. So in a very short period of time, primarily all I know is SQL and a few other commands, I very quickly can find the anomalies. Uh, another short example, just to give you a feel for it more so. 
you're Perry Mason, you want to know, should I take the offer for 30,000 as a lawyer or should I proceed? I might win, I might lose, there might be damages, they might be bankrupt and I get nothing. Overall, I'm going to lose $2,500 for this type of case. So very quickly with a decision tree, I could find if this case comes up again, I want to take the settlement. And here's just an Oracle example of how to do that. And I'm using a decision tree. This time I'm classifying data as the function, go into a table, buy customer, will they buy this logo card? And then I do a prediction using that model name on seeing them whether they'll buy this or not. And then the probability I can see, oh, they're in Chicago, 97%. Oh, they're in Ohio, only 9%. Oh, they're in Green Bay, 0% but it helps me very quickly to do that. And Oracle has all kinds of SQLs that I can look at here. Now, let's look at some of the things that are out there that I can go to do. And once again, I'm only gonna give you exposure to these. So I have the function areas, classification, clustering, anomaly detection, then the algorithms underneath it. I'm gonna tell you what different algorithms do for you. So the function I'm classifying maybe into good and bad customers. I have many algorithms to choose from. And while you're looking at this, think of your company. Which are the ones that I want to do? You may not be able to do it. You may need someone like me to get you started on it, but you know your business better than anybody. So eventually you are going to be the person that understands the data and what makes it good or bad for your business and which algorithms make more sense for your business. So the first one in classification naive base just uses a simple equation based on prior things that happened. For instance, reducing spam. Look at the spam that's come in the past, the different words that are being used, and I can very quickly, using that, find out if it's spam or not spam. Or I can look through reviews and they use certain words. Terrible, maybe it's a bad review. Uh, spectacular, I mean, it's a good review. And I very quickly can give sentiment analysis. A uh, Wikipedia example of distinguishing between males and females, given the person is six feet high, 130 pounds, and eight, size eight. Six feet high, it looks like a, a male based on the past, looks like a female based on the weight though. But with the foot size, it will classify it as a female. It doesn't mean it's right all the time, but just a way to classify things based on the past. Logistic regression is a choice between two things. Are they going to vote Democrat or Republic? Are they going to default on their mortgage, yes or no? Are they going to pass or fail a test? You could put a quick apex uh, screen in front of the data, and you could tell if this person studies only oh, one and a half hours or less, they're going to fail for sure. They study four hours or more, they're going to pass for sure. So it's a logic, zero or one. And then anything in between, they may pass, they may fail. There's also linear, linear regression. This is people use now to see what, you know, I'm hitting my numbers, so I'm gonna hit them in the future. Well, not necessarily, it depends on more than that. Another classifier decision tree, we saw this earlier with Perry Mason, but it calculates the cost and the utility or value. But one step further beyond a decision tree, sometimes I have a series of decision trees. And oh, some are zeros and some are ones. So do I just do them, you know, map all those out? And they say, no, use, use a random forest and take all these. Most of them are ones. So I'm going to go with a one. You will not overfit as much. So I might overfit too much where it should be this straight line. Or I might overfit this graph where it's going all over. Or I could smooth it out with a random forest. A random forest, very, very very, very helpful many times. It's also neural network. I talked earlier about it, TensorFlow to do this image classification, do it for autonomous vehicles, speech recognition, handwriting recognition, all kinds of things. Emulates the brain and how the brain works and all the layers that the brain will go through. So if I look at you know, a picture, it might look at this picture and say, well, there's an eye up, there's a nose, there's two eyes, and as it puts this through, and then it finds out, oh, it has two eyes and a nose. Oh, 
and it has ears that are so it could tell if it's a cat or a dog, but it certainly can very quickly tell that it's an animal. Then it can tell it's a dog as I go deeper and deeper, but it does it mathematically. Now machine learning, you tell it which features to extract and then it classifies it, but you can do deep learning where it will do both of those. Just show it a thousand pictures of dogs and it will figure out what a dog is. There's also classification uh, using support vector machines. I find this a very fast and good way as well. I'm going to separate good and bad customers, but by the largest margin possible. They've done the math already for you. How far apart do I need it to be? Explicit semantic analysis. Read through these reviews and tell me, are people happy or not happy with my product? Uh, sometimes it's very hard to build this yourself, but they usually have knowledge bases and products that do some of these for you. The classification. What are you trying to solve here? You know, how are you trying to classify things? You'll pick a different algorithm based on what you're trying to do. Clustering. I want to break it into groups. It's going to be three age groups, maybe. And it's called K-means. You see here, I've bro broken it into three groups. K is equal to three, and over several iterations, it gets to three groups where they are equal distance from each other. How many groups do I need? Well, most people use this elbow method to say, you know, how accurate do you need it to be? The more groups you have, the more accurate it's going to be. And as I go through the various iterations, it'll get better and better and better. Now, Oracle took this one step further, and they're the only ones that do this using what's called Oh, hold that thought a second. You could also do this by voters, Democrat, Republican, and put different states in it. You can do it by words. Oracle, though, took this one step further, and they do an O cluster. O cluster, instead of distance-based, like K-means, is density-based. So it depends how much data is in that given area. I think it's much better. You know, if the vo if this is voting, you know, there's dense areas. Distance doesn't matter as much if you own the whole state as if you own certain cities. Expectation maximization is where they're looking through maximum uh, likelihood of a model, and you go through an expectation step, and then you maximize that step, such as you know, old faithful eruptions. As I go through it. How long does it erupt for? Well, it depends on how long the delay is, but I won't see it. I have to wait a few minutes to see which one it's falling into. So clustering, how do I, not, not that I want to cluster the data, how do I want to cluster? Density, distance, or EM? Anomaly detection, we looked at a lot already. Uh, identify things, where are the outliers? I could also do this with text as well. Time series, sales, you know, video games tend to be at Christmas. But with Airbnb, sales tend to be around events that are happening at different times. So Airbnb uses machine learning, gives it back to the people that are, you know, renting out their houses and tells them you should be charging more at certain times. Could be weather, could be vacations, could be holidays, could be seasonality, could be how should could be something else. Also in time series is exponential smoothing. I have a stock market, the black line. But maybe I want to smooth that down. That's too many movements. So I do exponential smoothing with red or double exponential smoothing, blue. Uh, Holt Winter is very well known to smooth those things out. So what type of time series do I have? How do I want to adjust it? As you can see, the settings that you set and which algorithms you want to use depend on your business model. Regression. I want to see, am I going to hit my numbers in the future? Well, maybe it's linear. Or sometimes it's, you know, the unemployment as it goes down, GDP goes up. So a different kind of regression, also linear regression. And I find more often it's more like GLM, generalized linear model. It's not quite linear. You know, people start to work less hours as they get older, but they work a lot less if you don't pay them as much. Look at all those dots on there and how I can turn that into a line. Amazing. 
it assumes you're going to have random versus normal effects where everything's around the line. Around the line. Uh, support vector machine regression. I really like this for certain business applications, but yeah, it looks maybe your data points look more like a sine wave going up and down. But which do you want the red line or do you want the the more like the sine wave? Well, the margin of tolerance you set an epsilon so that you get a different wave. Now you have to know what your data should look like as you build this model, then you can use it in the future. There's also stepwise linear regression where I'm adding things and taking things away, very much like Six Sigma, where I keep adding and it keeps improving or taking away where it improves, but I could overfit that. Then there's neural network regression where I can use, as we saw before, could be speech recognition, could be numeric endpoint. But a point I did want to make here as I use these type of products, as I get the data, sometimes it's billions of rows, especially when you start moving into big data. So as you look and you build more and more levels to make it more accurate, you got to keep in mind, it takes a lot longer. And then those billions of rows go through several epochs or several where I'm going through the data 456 times. So that's where an exadata really comes in, where I have in memory, where I have partitioning, where I have storage indexes automatically doing things for me. Finding at which attributes make up my best customer. Well, I could do it simply. Just give me the minimum things, the basics. Keep it simple. I don't want to know the coin isn't perfectly round. I don't want to know the weighting is not perfect. I just want to know it's roughly 50-50. So that's a very fast algorithm, but more detailed principal component. I want to know the principal components, you know, how much they sell, how often they sell, where are they located, you know, and kind of reduce it to those and kind of make up my eigenvector or I'll say eigencustomer. And the word eigen comes from the German, just like my very own. So if you had a car you really liked and you have to go get a new one, you you might say, I want my Eigen car. I want a car just like my very own car right now. Well, an Eigen vector in the same way looks at that matrix of information that makes up a good customer and says, there's an Eigen vector that matches that matrix. And I can go out and search big data to find a customer just like your very own customer. Now they may have a different magnitude, a bigger or smaller customer, but this is uh, the simplest Eigen vector based analysis is multivariate rather, uh, for attribute importance. So finding your Eigen customer is one of the keys and that is a very good algorithm to do it. There's also KL divergence. You know, I have a player like the one on the right here and the, this heat map shows where they're making shots. And I say, is this new player gonna match up as well as that one? Well, in certain parts they do, but there's also the divergence between these two if it's not zero, is the measurement of surprise. So uh, my surprise is, oh, I've lost five more games. That's called a KL, pairwise KL divergence. There's also curd decomposition. And a lot of these decompositions make things faster. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm building a certain amount. I have a large matrix. I have the columns times a rank times the rows. And that's where the cur comes from, C-U-R for CUR decomposition. So maybe I'm looking at a skin sample as a good example, and I don't need to see every layer, but this layer matters. So I decompose it to the layer that actually matters when I'm doing image recognition. So different ways of doing attribute importance, depending on your situation, you'll know what's better or worse. It's also what am I buying together, market basket type things called association rules. What do people buy together when they go to the store? Always bought the beer, the diapers, the bread, the diapers, bread and milk, diapers and milk. Well, actually, I think we just need the bread, diapers, and milk together. Not as many people are buying the beer, but one guy did. But maybe we won't put it in the same location. Market basket. Oracle bought a company called Retech. They want to make you a great retail tailor by using that application they bought a couple of decades ago, they've been working on it. It's also feature extraction to make things faster. 
you know, I want to do facial recognition. I understand that's kind of controversial. I'm just making a different point about it, but I would use principal component analysis to, instead of looking at every person in the world, I could look at just certain uh, components to the structure of the face, and you'll find out there's, you know, maybe only a hundred or even less people where I don't have to look at billions of people to match it up. And this is what, where they use principal component analysis. But let's look at cats and dogs instead. That's less controversial. You know, they're all over the place, but let's put it in a vector. And let's put that vector on the x-axis to make life easier. Principal component will do dimension reduction through this feature extraction. I can also do singular value decomposition. Again, trying to make that matrix simpler. And what this does, it takes that matrix and says, well, I just need certain pieces of the components making up that matrix. It's just a way to do it faster. It's also explicit semantic analysis feature extraction where it's looking at this knowledge base and also looking at the relatedness of the words themselves. You know, is it the Bank of America we're talking about or the Bank of the Amazon? Well, they they said something about NASDAQ and MasterCard, obviously Bank of America. Is it the Jaguar car or the Jaguar pants? Well, they're talking about pumas and tigers and cave lions. It's gotta be the Jaguar in the forest. So a lot of those are feature extraction to make things faster and better. There's also text mining support that Oracle's had for over a decade. You can see some of them here. Additionally, in addition to all the predictive things we've seen, Oracle has SQL analytics that they build into analytics. I remember this back even in the 90s where they built a roll-up and a queue for different things and group by and group by roll-up and all this. So different people within the company could see just their view of that customer's cube. Now, once I have that, I could also put certain things in member to make it faster for different people or partition it a certain way. You could see all the different benefits of doing this. I could also share that with somebody, share a pluggable database of just a piece of that data because I have Oracle. I mean, machine learning is a place where Oracle can really shine. And there's statistical function that Oracle's been building since they had a database, you know, 40, 50 years ago, you know, where customers keep calling up, oh, you don't have this, you don't have this, you don't have this, and they've been adding it for decades upon decades. It's just rich with many different things. And you could do it in R, or you could do it in Python as well. Keep that in mind. Now that we've seen some of the things we can do from a business perspective, now let's look at this one more time. So what is it? What's the problem to solve? Oh, the business wants to make more money by finding customers like my very own. Well, I'll classify my current customers. I'll try different algorithms. And then once I have that, I'm gonna try algorithms on 60% of the data to build a model. And then I'm gonna use the other 40% of the data to see how good is this algorithm. And then I'll compare different algorithms to see which ones are better. And here's just another quick example where I have settings uh, where I'm using a decision tree algorithm, building a classification model, and seeing if they're going to buy this logoed credit card. Then I'm going to take that model with the other 40% of the data, you could use 30, whatever you want, and see using this model name, uh, create model here, I use that model to see if they're going to buy it and they have at least 50% chance of buying it. So maybe I'm going to go to big data and say, make sure my time is spent well, only look at these customers that are most likely to be like the ones I have now. Uh, there's other ways to look at what makes a model better or worse. One of them is lift, often used by data scientists. The higher the lift, the better. And this is comparing different uh, machine learning algorithms for a different for a certain problem that I did and I could see the lift of different models and I know which one I want to pick. It's also commun commun cumulative gain. So if you look at the purple line it says with 10% of the data you have 10% of the answer. With 50% of the data you have 50% of the answer but with certain algorithms you know support vector machines in particular here 
with only 10% of the data and 40% of the answer. So I'm getting a lot of lift with that, obviously, and you can see it here where I get a lot of lift with that. That was with GLM in that case. Another way data scientists will look at it is with a rock curve, an area under the curve. So here's that with 10% of the data, I see 10% of the answer. With 50% of the data, I see 50% of the answer. So that's just a random classifier. But if I have an algorithm, it's much higher. The area under the curve for a random classifier is 0.5 or 50% of the square here. Whereas the algorithms make it much higher area under the curve, maybe 0 0.75, 0 0.9. They say, don't put it that way when you tell your boss, tell them how much extra revenue you'll get. Oh, we won't have to have all the data, we won't have to buy that much data. And Oracle said, you know what? I'm gonna give you auto machine learning. And other people have auto machine learning, but not, I don't think like Oracle is, I believe much better and just beginning. But it selects all these algorithms and says, this is the one that's the best. Automatic feature selection, something I don't show you does automatic data where it fills in missing data and things like that and fixes the data and looks at the data in a much detailed, more detailed manner. There's auto model tuning make, which when, once you choose a model, make it even faster. So Oracle came out with this just March this year, auto machine learning, March 18th. And when did I use it? Uh, March 18th. You know, after using machine learning for a couple of years, uh, this would have been nice to have a couple of years ago was my thought. But anyway, when I look at auto machine learning, I built one and I said, let me try it out. Let's see if it's as good as mine. This thing took me a couple of days to build. And I found out what, the, what was the best algorithm. Well, come up with the same answer. I took it, classification of data, I give it a data source. Are they going to buy this credit card based on customer ID? And first of all, I noticed they had all kinds of other things, distinct values, min, max, mean, standard deviation. But then it went through. Once I ran it, I could do it either faster or more detail. And I found out support vector machine one which is exactly what won for me. And then I could create a notebook, which was great. So something that took me around two days, took Oracle four minutes. And this is an example of a Python notebook. And now I have a notebook out there for this, four minutes. So now we could see the job maybe isn't gonna be building the the model itself, but using auto machine learning to build it to some degree, given that I understand different things. Now here's all of them. I added 21C. You have XGBoost, which won a Kaggle competition, which is a place where you can grab data. I used this for COVID in the early days and built an Apex app that showed me what were the symptoms of COVID before I even heard it on TV. I uh, also do anomaly detection where I can look for subtle anomalies that they used in manufacturing for decades. Oracle hired the guy that actually built that application. We should be looking at these, you know, am I trying to classify good and bad customers? Which algorithm fits what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to cluster big data that I don't know about. How am I trying to break it up? What are the attributes that make them a good customer? And so on. Somebody went out to all the healthcare docs on PubMed and said, are they talking about algorithms? And what do they talk about? And the answer was, they are, number one. And whoa, they're talking about support vector machines and neural networks a lot. Why is that? Well, support vector machine, maybe it's because it can do anomaly detection. Neural network, maybe because it does image recognition, probably, right? But I could do it all with Oracle right now. So you've got to decide which piece of machine learning do you need to, do you want to do now, or does your company need? Do you have some data where you can classify it and do image recognition to build an autonomous car? Or do you want to classify data, do anomaly detection to find fraud? Or do you want to do regression to forecast things? Or don't maybe you don't have the data, but you want to go to big data and do targeted marketing to a certain age group that you know is important. For your company. Or maybe you just want to have fun with machine learning. There's somebody who said, I'm going to use machine learning to turn a painting of Maria Antoinette to see what she would look like if she was walking down the street today, or Henry VIII, or Queen Elizabeth. Or how about Little Deg's snack cakes? There was no model, so 
what would that person look like from the drawing that the guy built? Kind of fun. There's a lot of things you can do with machine learning. You have to understand what do you need to do, but this is an impact you make. You know, why did God put you on the earth right now at this point in time? What great impact can you make? I don't know what it is, but I could tell you with machine learning, you will make one of the biggest impacts you've ever made. And there's also RPA that's come out at the same time. And I got these slides from uh, Ramesh Kumar, so I put them here, who does a lot of stuff uh, with both UiPath and Blue Prison to do RPA type of stuff. But I have a robot who can assist me and do some of the repetitive work, like logging in, copying, pasting data, reading a PDF, even understand emails. Uh, and they don't make any mistakes. They don't call in sick. The programmer make makes a mistake, then they make a lot of mistakes. Sorry about that. Uh, what can they do though? Fill in forms, make calculations, copying, pasting, reading, writing to a database, moving files, folders. The average company today has 900 business processes. According to McKinsey, 85% can be automated right now. They can also look through various documents and scrape out different information. They can fill in e-business suite type of applications with different data. So robotic process automation is another place where you're leveraging machine learning that's out there from one of these people. And thanks for Mesh Kumar for sending me those. Uh, Bijou though said, what are the emerging jobs? Hey, 2020, AIML, number one by far. 74% growth. You know, machine learning, deep learning, TensorFlow, Python, natural language processing. All of this was within Oracle, just to let you know. Uh, number one language for machine learning is Python, but you can also do it in SQL. You can also integrate Oracle with TensorFlow. You can integrate Oracle with R. Oracle machine learning for Python. This is how it looks if you're a Python person. Just thought I'd show you. You have the other Python example as well. And then Oracle also has it in Oracle Analytics Cloud if you're familiar with these other products. We can give very impressive, uh, oops, sorry about that, very impressive output. So here's something I'm looking at sales by quarter, different amounts of sales, but the width is how much profit I'm getting from it. Color is different customer segments. Now I can add machine learning to that and just say I want to use K means algorithm and break it into five pieces. Here they are, five different colors of my data. Now this product is not free like the machine learning you get in autonomous database. Keep that in mind. Data, very, very uh, impressive to Wall Street, so much so that they bought up a bunch of companies that aren't using their data well and they want to get them to use machine learning, and then resell those companies. That's how much people are not using it. 23 more times likely to acquire customers, more likely to retain them. Why? Because they understand them. You can see by the various algorithms. But big data is so big, so coming at you fast. Different values in different data, different varieties, different truths of different data, veracity. One Oracle database can look at all those different data types, whether it's relational, you know, uh, JSON data, graph data, spatial data, file data, documents. Uh, and then there's all that IoT data just coming from everywhere. You need to leverage that. And it's connecting our home now. You're going to see more of this tomorrow with Bertrand's uh, presentation. It's driving prescriptive analytics, not what happened, which CFOs used to ask for. Then they'd say, why did it happen? Then you got the predictive, what will happen? Now it's, what's the best thing that can happen and prescribe it to me? As a DBA, if I know Oracle in this, if as a developer, I understand Oracle, I know probably 90% of this. I just need Big Data SQL to go to Hadoop in a secure way instead be more of a data administrator if I'm a DBA. Data engineer works part of the anal analytics team providing data ready to use, 33% average growth. I'll just give you the difference. Difference between this job, data engineer and a DBA. DBA works twice as long. Data engineer makes twice as much because he's in the analytics team, making a difference with machine learning. This is uh, something 
came out recently, and it's amazing, is in the process of machine learning, what's the biggest piece of it? Data identification, aggregation, data cleansing, data label, and data augmentation. It's over 75% of the job. Unbelievable, almost around 80% of it. So when I look, exactly 80% of it in this diagram. But uh, if you're a DBA and you move into this area for your company to a greater degree, you A, are going to make a bigger impact, but you're desperately needed there. And then as I increase the amount of data, here's my random one where 50% gave me 50% of the answer. Now I only need a 1% of the data, and wow, I have almost 100% of the answer already. I don't know how we got over 100%. That was an Oracle slide, so who knows. And then if I have an exit data, oh, rack. It'll be available. Active data guard will be recoverable. Multi-tenant, I could separate things from other stuff. Oh, I could put it in memory, partition it, storage index, make it much faster, columnar flash cache, get the speed behind it. And then in the apps, Oracle also put it right in the apps. And I'm just going to show you two examples. One of them is manufacturing, where it gives you predictive alerts, telling you're going to have a quality problem or a yield problem or cycle time problem. This one is people who's more or less important and who's gonna leave. And uh, she's not too happy. I can do a what if, oh, if I give her more money, she's still not happy. She wants more vacation time. That's what's important to her. So Oracle's put it right into their own applications, but machine learning is only a piece of all of AI. You know, I gotta get robotics and all these other things uh, as things go. As we go into the future, are you leveraging the database in robotics, including the robot, which is a software robot, RPA? Some people are. Somebody is Sushi Host is a robot. Oh, you can leverage Pepper right now into Oracle if you want. How do you know something's big? Pepper the robot, when it came out, all of them sold out in one minute. But you can also use Oracle Virtual Assistant with things like Siri, things like Alexa, Facebook Messenger, and so on. You can see what is it's just an example of the Virtual Assistant. What are people saying? I thought it was interesting. They're saying agent. I don't want to talk to this robot anymore. I want an agent. Hello. Uh, are you leveraging it with virtual reality, with mixed reality, you know, maybe to sell products or they look at it on their iPad? Augmented reality, different ways to leverage that. Oracle has right now with Microsoft's HoloLens where they can see inside the vehicle and all the parts that make it up. How about with the GPS and robotics? UPS and Amazon obviously are doing a lot with it to try to build this, but there's also have this pizza delivery guy where a robot is gonna build the pizza while the autonomous car drives to your house where he arrives right at your house at the moment the pizza's coming out of the oven. Uh, could have used that last year. And then, oh yeah, yes, with IoT, you're being tracked with a lot of cameras. Keep that in mind. So people know all this data exists. Used to be virus, social engineering, just vice takeover. Now, extortion and corruption. Well, are they going to do aug augmentation extortion? They say so. I mean, we already have data extortion, and they said it was going to be 2028. We already have it. Only 2021. So make sure your company doesn't go from magical to manic to toxic. Some companies have done that. Make sure you have the security of Oracle. Some databases point to one or two of these and say, well, we have security like Oracle, these two. And I'm like, how about the other 50 things? Do you have any of those? Autonomous database comes in there automatically. Gartner 2013 should be all about tech things, internet of things, big data, cloud computing. We're coming. At this point, it's 5%. At the far right, it's 30%. 2015, it was all about robotics coming, connected homes, smart robots. Hybrid cloud computing was almost here. Actual robots, though, to me, are beyond science fiction. Uh, disruptive future will have to do with a lot of implants and virtual reality and things like that. Will people spend their life in virtual reality and just come back to reality to make more money to spend more time in virtual reality. The implants into the brain are already working today.
already can do. This guy, quadriplegic, can now use his brain to take a drink of, of water. 2016, all about implants in the twilight zone kind of things, virtual private, brain computer interface, cognitive experts. Why is this happening? Because as we go two to the fourth, two to the eighth, two to the 16th, and we get to 64 bit where we are now, it's 16, 18 with 18 zeros. Oracle had a 64 bit database in 1995, but they didn't have the hardware. So what did Oracle do? Bought a hardware company. If I put this in miles an hour, Windows was one mile an hour, internet is 65,000 miles an hour. 64 bit, 300 trillions of miles per hour. That's the phase we're in right now, getting into machine learning. The phase after that, you won't even recognize today when we get there. Five trillion, trillion, billion. 2018, it was all about tech creating this new reality, this digital twin. That's you and your helper, the autonomous database. Deep neural nets, mixed reality, augmented reality. There's a quantum computer if you've never seen one. There's a D-Wave chip. It uses something called entanglement. I have an entanglement book. I've read a lot. That's You get a new one if you want to buy one. It looks better. Uh, that's what helps quantum computers. But what does 2020 say? I know you wanted to know that. It says machine learning is coming, not even at 5% yet. Chatbots coming, not even at 5% yet. Augmented intelligence. It's a little further out. So where are you today? If you have any questions, send them. I don't have any yet. But, you know, Star Trek used to look so advanced. Now, you thought maybe it would take a thousand years to get here. And guess what? It's already here. I'll go into this much faster example. Uh, entanglement, which you use for quantum computers, Einstein is called spooky action from a distance. It doesn't, a, doesn't do regular physics. We're moving faster into this implanting and hive mind world. Just wanted to give you a feel for machine learning and WIN. How do you win? Know what's important now. That there is a disruption. I think everybody knows that's here. Machine learning in Oracle, what it has and what it has an autonomous database for you, machine learning. Some of the applications of machine learning that are out there and big data and IoT, uh, machine learning inside Oracle applications itself, AI, chatbots, and then RPA and robots and the future of how I can use Oracle. Things may come to those who wait, but only the things left and those who hustle. Somebody's asking about when will uh, artificial general intelligence come? Where you know what? When, when is that flipping point where uh, AI knows all the knowledge of everybody out here? Well, Google is reading every book out there right now. They read it. I, I can't remember. Ray Kurzweil talked about it in one of his talks. Maybe every five or 10 minutes, they read a new book, but they're reading every book and every piece of knowledge anyone has ever known. So eventually you'll get to artificial general intelligence, but they may be the first to get there. I'll leave it at that. How long, that's a little harder to say, but everything seems to happen faster than I think. Uh, but Oracle, it's been the number one database since I've ever worked with it. Great sales team, great database, security leader, BI leader, we're the leader in the cloud, but they really accelerated. Uh, they have everything to win in the cloud. And sorry to see we lost a couple of friends along the way, two big supporters of the MOUG over the years. So I dedicate this to them. We look at Oracle over the years, though, back to all the way when databases started, they were number one. I used to keep track of this, and they've been number one, still number one. Some rise and fall, a little like Teradata. Some people stay up there like Oracle, Microsoft. Uh, and some are kind of rising. They get a lot of press, but they're a long way from getting to the top of the heap. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, a few books, a lot of uh, references. Here's some nice things you could go to to learn more. I got from Charlie Berger. Again, how to get those notes. I want to thank you for coming. Uh, just to let you know, 
where does Mark Benioff and Larry, who who are always very competitive people, you know, they get together, rebels with a cause, so they do take the time to make an impact. I think if you want to make an impact in the world, you know, you've been given this chance where God has put you in this world at just the right time. The right product is machine learning. Make sure you leverage it to make an impact in this world because the ability to do so is like no other at any time in history. And I want to thank everybody for coming. I don't see any other questions, so have a great day. Thanks again, guys. Bye now.